for both left and right sided congenital diaphragmatic hernias, there is a huge disparity in terms of severity of disease. In the best case, the diagnosis isn't even made after birth, it's made much later, usually at about six or eight months of life. And in those situations, the diaphragmatic defect is very, very small, and the children tend to be asymptomatic after they're born. And in this ca case, they still require a surgical procedure and operation to repair the diaphragmatic defect. But the expectation is that the children are completely healthy and won't have any health problems for the long term. Kind of in the middle range of diaphragmatic hernia babies, we kind of expect a uh, one to two month hospital stay uh, with much of that time being on a ventilator or with mechanical assistance from a ventilator. Um, many of those babies will have other organs affected by their disease and those include the esophagus and stomach because it's very, very common for these babies to have gastroesophageal reflux. The other issues that we can sometimes see is some developmental delay, which is very common. It's probably related to both the severity of the disease as well as a prolonged hospitalization. Many have ongoing respiratory problems. Some of the infants will need to go home on oxygen and may be on oxygen for years after discharge from the hospital. Uh, our most severe cases have uh, a number of organs affected by their disease. And other problems that we see include hearing loss, uh, which can be very, very significant uh, to the point where the children require hearing aids and maybe even completely deaf. Again, we see many cases of failure to thrive with some developmental delay and poor feeding and problems, which linger on for years. And in the worst case scenario, uh, the expectation is that we'll see a somewhat sickly child who's in and on, out of the hospital frequently, especially for the first three or four years of life. The long-term multidisciplinary congenital diaphragmatic clinic is very special to US, UCSF. There are only two other long-term CDH clinics in the nation. There's also one in Canada. And the specific goals for these clinics are to ease patient care because a number of medical specialties need to be involved in the long-term care of these patients. So those specialties include the surgeons and neonatologists, our developmental specialists. We have a nutritionist present at every clinic. We frequently will have a pulmonologist present at the clinic. Occasionally we'll need help from a social worker or a long-term health care worker who can help the families in terms of uh, supplying medical uh, necessities. And the goal behind the multidisciplinary clinic and the multidisciplinary approach to patient care is to really simplify uh, the lives for these families so that we can reduce the number of hospital visits and, and trips to the clinic that they need to take. We can also better, best assess how the babies are doing. So we can see how the babies are doing after they leave the hospital. Uh, there are a number of problems which can be lingering for these congenital diaphragmatic hernia patients. And unless you have a special expertise and know what kind of problems to look for, uh, they can be missed, and they're easily missed by a pediatrician who is in uh, group practice or private practice who just doesn't know what kind of problems to look for. And so we like to follow our congenital diaphragmatic hernia patients. Our preference is to see uh, the patients uh, approximately four to six times in the first year of life. Then we see them two or three times the second year of life. And then generally, if the babies are thriving, we'll see them annually. But it is a, a very long-term commitment to their care.